Hey, Kevin O'Leary, a.k.a. Mr. Wonderful, where am I in Los Angeles? Why? We're shooting Shark Tank in the middle of it. We have a dark day. We have a day off. Where do I want to be when I'm in Los Angeles on a dark day? <laughs> Inside of the F.P. Jordan Boutique. Why? Because I love this brand. I love this watch. And I happen to be with Teddy because we're doing a bunch of social media and watches. And Teddy's never really seen a broad collection of F.P. Jordans like he's going to see today. So I'm his host, along with a legend here too, the brother of F.P. Jordan himself, Laurent. <laughs> <laughs> and he's looking very L.A. today, which is fantastic. What I'd like to do is tell you a little story about this brand. Now, watch collecting is about the love of art. It's also about the love of investing because you want to find pieces of art. You want to find watches that are unique and different. And I'm all about the dial. And there's no dial on earth like one made by F.P. Jordan. That's why this brand has rocketed in the last 17 years to practically the top of the echelon of, of I call it micro brands, but really something else now because collectors all around the world really, really try and find these pieces for themselves in the secondary market, but also directly from Jordan himself. They only make about 900 pieces a year. That's it. And that's why it's very hard to get one of these. However, when you talk about investing, my goodness, the appreciation's insane. Let me ask you, Laurent, why in, it's been the last five years this brand has gone crazy. Yeah. Why? Why? I guess people start getting tired of massive production. They want exclusivity, rarity. Yeah. Well, that's, you get that for sure with Jordan. Yeah. But also, these pieces are all different. They all have their own personalities. The, the, the movements, the calibers are unique. Mm -hmm. They're kind of pieces of art. That's the way I look at it. That's what they are. Because yeah. nobody needs a watch today. Yeah. No one needs a mm -hmm. watch. You have two, three cell phones, maybe. Yeah. Why do you want to buy a, a, a watch? I have way more than that in watches, but because <laughs> no, I no, I'm talking about the cell phones. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. But <clears throat> you know, FP Journe, I like to call it a disease, because when you buy yeah. one, you get infected, and it's yeah. very bad economically for yeah. you. Uh, that I don't know for you. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, unfortunately, there's no vaccine. It's very, <laughs> it's, very, it's very unusual that our collectors only buy one FP Journe. They want them all. Yeah. Now, at the moment, it's virtually impossible. We try to please as many people as we can, but we disappoint a lot. We have to ask them to be patient. Yeah, I, I've been through that journey myself. You I have know. to be patient. But I have to ask a question. I mean, I have the opportunity to speak to somebody who's so connected to Francois, Francois Paul. I mean, talk about getting into his head and what he creates in these watches. And because I think that's part of the entry. He talks about art. These are all, I think, parts of his own creation, what he's going after. Could you talk about just his general philosophy when he makes a piece? You know him so personally. Well, he, 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 do, he wants to create, he wants to be uh, honest with his collectors. Always. Um, it's difficult to talk about Francois Paul uh, on a personal level. He's, he's, he's always thinking about something. If you ask him, that, that's the perfect example that will probably answer your question. If you ask him, what is your favorite watch, FP Journe watch? And he will, he will tell you the next one. <laughs> yeah. So that's something that I can resume like this, I think. Hmm. He will tell you the next one. That sums it up perfectly. He, he always thinks about innovation. So for him, uh, doing 10 times the same thing is too boring. The reason I got into Jorn was the people that were the collectors. Mm -hmm. That is the craziest group of people I've ever met. From every walk of life, every discipline, you name it, with one consistent element to it, their love of genre. And they're passionate about their pieces, and we love to talk about it together. Now I have that disease too, and you're right, there's no vaccine. So I'm constantly looking for my next genre. You know, I'm waiting patiently. I'm always bugging everybody. But it's, it's a fantastic journey because, let me, let me be pragmatic about the perspective. Yes, they're expensive, but they're great value as an investment. But if you consider what is in any of the species that we have here, yes. Value for money? I would agree with you. I would agree with you. These are extraordinary pieces. And, you know, the one that I wanted the most when I first met FP in New York and the people at the New York boutique 
was this piece. Santigraf Tokyo, yeah. 24. It's, it's um, one of the 10 that were made for the New York boutique. Correct. Um, when always... I said I would like to buy it, they laughed at me. <laughs> they laughed at me because there was a thousand people trying to buy this piece. Yeah. And it would only go to a collector who had at least three journes. Well, obviously we want to please our oldest collector, but we need new blood as well in the, in the company. Let me tell you what I did to get this watch. When I was you told, made an auction? Well, I, I, I basically, uh, you know, in talking with Pierre, uh, he said, look, Kevin, you, you don't even own a Jordan. Why don't you start small? Buy one and I'll get you. Uh, we always ask yeah. for this. And I said, but how can I get this piece? He said, you don't even have one. You need three at least. I said, I'll buy four, <laughs> which I've never done before, ever, with any brand, what I did that day. I actually sat down with him and I built a collection over a 24-hour period and I bought them all. That's the most I've ever spent at once in any brand and I'm so glad I did because every one of these watches has been an incredible investment. Oof. And now when I walk around with this piece, everybody goes nuts that knows Jorn. Absolutely nuts. So Teddy, hold that for a second. One of ten, extremely coveted within the Jorn society, but you know, I was on a flight to Geneva from New York to visit my father with this piece on, and the woman beside me in the line getting on the plane said, how the hell can you even tell the time on that thing? I said, I don't. <laughs> I've I heard that story before, yeah. I You're right, though. Because it's art. She said, that's crazy. Who made that watch? That tells you it's a great watch. It starts a conversation. That's what makes it so magic. And of course, it has elements of red, which for me are very important. All my watches have red bands. Let's talk a little bit, Laurent, about some of these pieces. Mm -hmm. You've been kind enough to show us some of yours. What about this? Tell us, tell us the history of this. Chronometer Optimum. Yeah. That's a watch that Francois Paul initially wanted to create. I mean, for those who may not know, the first watch, wristwatch that Francois Paul made was the Tourbillon. Then he wanted to make the most accurate mechanical wristwatch possible after the tourbillon. Because the tourbillon doesn't mean that it's an accurate watch. Right. What's going to make the accuracy of the watch will be the constant force from Antoine. The tourbillon is a parasite for the watch. It's heavy to carry, it's nice to look at, but other than that, it's useless. So I wanted to make this, and this watch came only in 2012 because he couldn't make it. He couldn't put all the elements together. So to reach this accuracy, the optimum is made with four exceptional elements. The first one are the two barrels mounted in parallel, not to increase the power reserve. Remember, we are looking for accuracy. So the, the, the dual barrel mounted in parallel will deliver a more stable energy to the escapement. Before the escapement, we got a constant force from Antoine, which is going to deliver the energy to the escapement, the energy from the barrels to the escapement, at the moment where the second passes. It generates, like in the tourbillon, a natural deadbeat second. That is shown at the okay, back of the watch, back. if you want to. So there's the deadbeat running that's, seconds that's the on the front. Second. Okay. Yes, and it, Francois Paul wanted to show it, because it's generated by the constant force from Antoine, but by putting it on the, on the dial, then the dial would have been unbalanced. Hmm. And this is the last thing he wants. This is gold, is it not? Yes, this yeah. one is gold. Yeah. So he's maximizing the torque of that mainspring um, with that remontoir. I know, the, 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 the constant force from Montoir is a complicated chain of wheel mm -hmm. that talks to the escapement. Mm -hmm. So the third, just to finish with the elements, the third element is the high performance by actual escapement. What is the enemy? of accuracy in a mechanical wristwatch. Friction. So to limit the friction, what do you need? Lubricant. Yeah. But with the time, lubricant becomes a problem. It gets dry, it gets... And, and, and Within the, 10 years, right? It depends. Yeah. Now the oil are synthetic, they are good qualities. Yeah. But if you can avoid lubricant, it's like in your car. 
you don't need to change the oil. Yeah. This watch, not talking about the old watch, but the escapement of this watch works with no oil at all. So no, is it no Swiss lever? It's, no, yeah. No, yeah. no, no lubricant at the escapement. Mm -hmm. There is oil in other parts, but which is the, the, uh, the escapement is the biggest consumer of oil into, into the system. The reason is it's a bayak shore. So it's simple to understand like this. If you press hard with your hand on the surface, well, if you want to move, you need oil. If you divide the friction by two, no more need of oil. So two escapement wheels on this one, no oil. And the last element is the Phillips curve termination on the balance wheel for a better equilibrium. And that makes all that together a masterpiece. Is this the most accurate of the Jouren watches? They are all accurate, yeah. but w this one is extreme. Yeah, fantastic. I'm very proud to own this with a black dial on it, which is amazing. Beautiful watch. Congratulations. Yeah. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Let's talk about this story. Um, last night, um, I, we had a guest uh, come to the set of Shark Tank. His name is Peter Jones, and he's a legend in England where he's been on the Dragon's Den show, which is the equivalent in England for 18 years, one of the longest running shows on the, on the planet. And we were having dinner to get to know each other, and I noticed on his wrist a tourbillon, an F. Pigeon tourbillon. I said, do you know what you have there? He said, yeah, I do. My wife bought it for me in Harrods, which is a very famous department store, 17 years ago. And I told him I was coming to meet you here today, mm -hmm. that we would come to the Jeune Boutique and we're going to do this with you, Teddy, talking about F.P. Jorin. And he said, take it with you. I would love to have them see it because it hasn't been in a Jeune Boutique for 17 years. It's going home. And you confirmed this. Mm -hmm. It's been made in 20, uh, 2004. What's this watch worth today? It was a gift from his wife who bought it because she loved the dial. Mm -hmm. She probably didn't know a lot about Jorn at the time. Bought it for him. He loved it when he got it. This is made of platinum. It weighs a ton. Correct. Gotta be platinum. It's so heavy. Yeah. It's a lot of platinum there. Yeah. Well, it started, it started with the subscription, the tourbillon. That was the first one. Because Francois Paul didn't have money enough to produce the watches. So the people were paying in advance and one watch and it was sold to, to, the, to the owner. Uh, one watch was financing the other one, I guess. In the early, so this is one of the early days. No, this one is not a subscription. This one is a, so this one is a, is a TN that came after the T. The reason why, I mean, the difference between the T, the main one, because I don't want to get into too much details, is that the T didn't have the dead second. Ah. So it was just... This is the dead second. Like this, yes. Yeah. It was just showing the constant force from yeah. not the second. Yeah. And Francois Paul was looking at the watch. He said, well, the constant force from as I mentioned earlier, generates a natural, nat natural dead beat second. It's stupid not to show it. So that's when he came with the TN, which is the generation after the T, with the dead beat second. And now if you want to buy a platinum TN? It's in, well, you can buy it second hand. Yeah. We, we don't what, produce them anymore. What do you think it would trade for? It depends on the condi conditions. This, uh, this piece this, looks to this, be in good uh, condition. Uh, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, it's in great conditions. I would say 300K <laughs> minimum. $300,000. What a great investment that wife made. And absolutely. He was her and, and this combination is pretty rare with the uh, gold dial. Yeah. Normally they come on a gray dial. How about that? I'm going to tell. So actually, Peter. it could be a little bit more. Really? More than 300. Yeah. He's 2004 be... that was produced? Yes. You know what I love about him? And I only met him yesterday. He wears his watches. But that's the whole idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and he wears his watches. He's, he's wearing this piece and when he comes to the Shark Tank set. I mean, it gives it a soul. It makes it real. Even though this thing is so rare and, and you know, a beautiful investment. And they are not fragile. Yeah, it's a beautiful piece. Yeah. I loved it. You know, I looked at it and said, oh my goodness, that's, that's, a, that's a piece of legend. 
Mm -hmm. Now, let's talk. You have talk something behind your back there. For yeah, I've, I've got something rare here. I ah. heard rumor of this piece. Okay. Uh, this is, it was an idea FP had to create 18 complications in a watch, which is impossible for in the first place, and then have them all adjustable from one crown, which is not only impossible, it's insane. It could never be done. But here it is. It was done. Tell us about this watch. This is the rarest of the rare mm -hmm. uh, built for individuals, correct? Astronomique. Mm -hmm. 18 complications, all controlled. Truly grand. How is that even possible? You know, François Paul. Uh, I mean, how uh, long did it take to even think this? Six through? years. Eight years. Yeah. Incredible. And the design of the dial came from a drawing that Charles, son. one of his sons, mm -hmm. made years ago. And François Paul inspired himself from this drawing to make that. Not for the movement, obviously. So this is uh, the crown jewel of F.P. Journal. Mm, for now, yes, it is. Yeah, for now. So when it's always the next one, remember. Yeah. But if a collector wants to buy this watch, how much is it? I mean, to order one. The collector has to be approved by François Paul, so he needs, first of all, to fill up an application. Yeah. From the moment the application is approved, the gentleman will have to pay 50% of the price of the watch. Which is? Which is, in Swiss franc, 885,000 Swiss franc. Close to a million dollars US. It's close to a million dollars US. Yeah. 960 last time I checked. Yeah. So you put down 500,000 USD. Kind of. And then how long does it take to make the watch? Well, it depends. Uh, to, to make the watch, it's three and a half to four months. <laughs> But we got lots of requests already on this as well, and then there is a waiting list for this as well. As crazy as so it how is. So many, how many per year are going to be made? Three. 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 Yeah. Three, this, three, three, three and a half. Yeah. So this is truly a collector's piece. There's no question. Because, you know, but it's a beautiful watch. It has the classic elements, and probably you have to sit down for a couple of hours to figure out how to set it. And it's going to take a while to learn. It's not that complicated. Really? No. The, the user, user manual is one, one, one piece of paper. <laughs> That's it. But I, I, know, I know also the watch is also on the back. It's not just seeing uh, the movement. Uh, there's, yeah. time, there's information on the back too. There, there are lots of information at the back. A question of time. You can see the tourbillon. You can see the annual calendar with the zodiac, or, uh, zodiac sign. Zodiac mm -hmm. What else do you see there? Uh, uh, so on, on the face you got yep, all the way. Phase. So you have the power reserve, mm -hmm. okay? Two time zones here, local time zone on the gold hand, and second time zone there, sunrise, sunset. Here the seconds that are jumping seconds due to the constant force from Montoire again. Sideral time and minutes. So that's it for it. I love the sunrise, sunset indicator. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. beautiful. And the window gets narrower. It's such a cool execution of yeah. that. And the back. And in the back, you have here the equation of time. You can see the tourbillon here. And as I said, the Zodiac. annual calendar. Mm -hmm. And if you activate this, this is the sherry of the cake. Minute repeater. Stainless steel? Yes. Yeah. For the sound. Mm -hmm. right. We got an option in gold now. Oh, yeah. Really? Rose gold? Yeah. Must be beautiful. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Different sound, I assume. No, not, so, not really. And the other complication that doesn't show on the watch itself has indication. So we got the tourbillon, constant force remontoire and dual barrel mounted in parallel as well. Hmm. Fantastic. It's truly a piece of art. Yes, it is. I mean, so we've had a very special day today here in F.P. Journe because it's so rare to get all these watches, including one that's 17 years old, all in the same place at the same time. And 
No, nothing better than to have FP's brother here, okay. Laurent, explaining this to us. For collectors now, probably one of the, the most sought after brands in the world. It's, it's going through a transition. And you have to remember one thing about this brand. FP Jean is still alive. He's still alive. He is the Picasso of watchmakers, and he still walks the earth. So that in itself is remarkable. A lot of the designers of some of the most famous pieces are no longer with us. He's still here, still designing new ones. I've had a fantastic journey. Teddy, thank you very much. Laurent, spectacular. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. Pleasure. Hit that like button and listen, subscribe, because we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to do this again somewhere, and I can't wait for my turbio. I've been waiting. I'm on the waiting list. I'm waiting. FP, please listen to me. Get me that watch. I'm dying for it. Thanks, everybody. Take care.